Oregon football welcomed in 50 newcomers this offseason, and a lot of them will have to play some important roles this upcoming year, especially on the off offensive line. The Ducks lost four of their five mainstay starters from a season ago on their O-line. Over the years, the position has become a bigger piece of the puzzle for Oregon, playing a key role of the explosiveness of the offense. Last season, the Ducks surrendered just five sacks, setting a tough feat for the new offensive line to follow. The starting positions are still up for grabs in camp right now, but the group says they feel no pressure. We say to ourselves, other people are going to put pressure on us, but we have a standard ourselves that we always want to keep at. So the pressure of it being a new year, all that, every single year in college is probably going to be a, a new piece to your line of some sort. So whoever's the next best, you do that in preparation. But as long as our standard's the same, we're looking at it like realistically, we have a standard to upkeep. And then once we get there, let's raise that bad baby. So there's no pressure. The pressure's really on me, but I let them let me get all the pressure. Y'all go out there, have fun to play ball, and let's just have fun doing so. Terry says he'll have his starting 5-0 line set 10 days prior to game one against Portland State. Oregon State lost a running back to the transfer portal before fall camp in Jam Griffin, but the running backs are still confident they can provide a big impact for the Beavers' offense once again this season. Damian Martinez and Deshaun Fenwick are both healthy, fighting for the starting job, and they're ready to roll come game day. We have an awesome pro-style offense that we run under Coach Lingren. I love my running back coach, and I love the guys that I go to work with every day. So. So if you love coming to work, then this is where you want to be. It's yeah. just a great environment. After this week, the Beavers will only have two more weeks to start preparing for their first opponent, San Jose State. The World Athletic Championship starts early tomorrow morning in Budapest at 4.15 a.m. Heat for the women's 1,500 meters. Former Duck and U.S. current champion Nikki Heltz is in Heat 1, while former Duck Jessica Hall of Australia is in Heat 4. At 10.02 a.m., it's the men's turn for 1500s. Former Duck Cole Harker is in Heat 3. 11.37 a.m., Oregonian and world record holder Ryan Krauser will go for another world title in the men's shot put final. Krauser announced on social media this morning that he's dealing with two blood clots in his lower leg, but he has been cleared to compete. Coverage on CNBC begins, goes from 1.30 a.m. to 5 a.m., then again from 10 a.m., to 11.30 a.m., then switch into NBC for 11.30 to 1 p.m. On the diamond, the Eugene Emeralds are still streaking. The M's have now won their fourth game in a row. They took game three against the Vancouver Canadians 9-1 to tonight. A reminder, though, make-up game for that postponed game on Tuesday. The M's will have a doubleheader tomorrow starting at 5 p.m. To the WNBA, we go former Ducks Sabrina Ionescu and New York Liberty paying a visit to the Phoenix Mercury. Second quarter, we go Ionescu. Using a pick, attacking, tosses up a floater in the lane, and she gets it to fall. Liberty go up by three. Moving to the third quarter now, Kelly Grave Girls working in sync. Courtney Vandersoot setting up Ionescu, and she knocks down the three. New York extending their lead to 53-42. to Staying in the third, Liberty coming up with the rebound. Feed the hot hand, Ionescu pulling up from 28 feet out, and she hits that one as well. New York pulls away. They cruise to the win, 85 to 63. Satu Sabali and the Dallas Wings also on the road at the Connecticut Sun. Closing minutes of the second is where we would start the action here. Sabali setting up for the ball on the wing. She would get it, spinning off her defender and kisses it off the glass. Wings lead by six. On to the third. Crystal Dangerfield using the pick, driving the lane, sees Sabali wide open, kicking it out as she buries the three there. Dallas goes on to win this one big as well. Final score, 95-75. to 75. To the NFL, Kayvon Thibodeau and the New York Giants hosting Carolina in the preseason that we all know Allen loves. Second quarter, Panthers in the red zone. Thibodeau untouched off the edge, comes up with the sack. Number one overall draft pick Bryce Young goes down for a seven-yard loss. Giants hold Carolina to the field goal later in the quarter. Tyrod Taylor swinging it out to the former Beaver Isaiah Hodgins breaking a tackle, picking up 25 yards on the pass there, helping lead New York to a touchdown. Fourth quarter, Panthers back in the red zone. Former Beaver Jake Luton at quarterback now. He would take the ball in the shotgun, going up top. Gary Jennings coming up with the ball in the end zone for the touchdown, but New York holds on for the win there, 21-19.